It's an ancient problem with modern approaches to this. Like so many things, I think we can make difficult problems easy. When a stone occurs, one of the first things we notice is that we usually have a pain in the back. Now, it doesn't always stay there, but sometimes can move around the side and go down into the groin. This is our problem. We can have a stone in the pelvis of the kidney. We can have a stone in the ureter. We have 11 million people in the state of Ohio, give or take. And roughly 30% of those folks at some point in their life are going to have problems with stone disease. Men, more often than women. This is a dye study in the kidney that outlines a significant ureteral stone. But when a stone obstructs the ureter, you have significant discomfort. The fact that we plug up the ureter in such a way that this system above it dilates, and that's what what really hurts. We can look for stones in a number of ways. What I just showed you would be called a retrograde polygram, where we put contrast in from below. This is a CT scan, and the CT scan is more sensitive than the plain x-rays. This individual has the stone. In this case, it would be the right kidney and the lower pole. If you get to deal with a stone early in its occurrence, you have a much better chance for a reasonably smooth event of solving the problem. The ambulatory surgery environment is very responsive and can make things happen quickly. And if we address stone disease shortly after its occurrence, we have a much better chance of resolving it in an easy manner. So let's go back to the anatomy for a moment. Um, this is the kidney, and these tubes are ureters. And this is the bladder. And this is called a ureteral stent. We're able to slip a stent in, and all of a sudden, the pain that was so excruciating disappears. And how does that work? Simply put, this is a drain that allows the urine to get out of the kidney. The stretch of the kidney diminishes, and the pain significantly diminishes with it. One of the things that we do here, and I think do very well, is use some of the latest instrumentation. The ureteroscope uh, is an instrument that we can travel almost anywhere in the urinary system. An x-ray unit is called a C-arm. And when we have a patient who has a stone and we want to put in a stent, they'll be on this table, they'll have an anesthetic. And even the anesthesiologists in the ambulatory surgical environment are special. Let me tell you a little bit more about the efficiency of the ambulatory surgery environment. One of the places most of our patients come from is hospital emergency rooms. Why? Well, just go to an emergency room and see how long you sit there. You could come to a physician who is oriented toward the ambulatory environment, a urologist, and you could present with that to that individual with the kind of symptoms we're talking about, but you would be home in your bed, comfortable, and my guess is the person that went to the ER is still sitting or waiting in the emergency room. This individual under anesthesia who is not feeling any discomfort, we can introduce this scope through the urethra. And since we were talking about that stone right in the middle of the ureter, oh my gosh, there it is. We can literally see it. Well, what do we do now? Well, we're going to make it go away. Well, two ways. That's big enough to plug up the tube. How are we going to get it out of there? Remember that space age technology? Here's the stone. We're going to come right by it, and this is the uh, ureteroscope that we can pass. We bumped the stone that popped up into the kidney. So we just followed it up. We corralled it. This is a device where we can pass this device through the scope. It'll slip right around the stone and stabilize it. This is how that system works. Here the basket engages, grasps the stone, and now we have it stable. 
If it's in the kidney, we may take it from the lower part of the kidney where it's hard to get around the corner and put it in the upper part of the kidney. And then we use the space age technology we're talking about, which of course is the laser. And there it is. There's the laser on the stone. And with the laser energy, let me show you what happens to the stone. We turn it into very small fragments. And that's how we remove this stone, which looks like a boulder in a straw, to the ureter. You may know the word uh, shockwave lithotripsy. Lithotripsy. This is it. Uh, this is uh, an imaging system. And right down here, I'll tell you a little bit more about this. This is where the shockwave is generated. And here we can manage the stone location and we can adjust the shockwave so we're literally shooting with shockwaves. Now here, this is the imaging system and this is the shock generating system. In this case, we're going to treat these stones with absolutely no physical invasion of the body. So, as we see it on an x-ray, this one is visible, it has calcium in it, and we can focus a shockwave right on that stone. Here's a patient who's on our lithotripsy uh, system, and here is the shockwave generator focused on the stone, and that stone then is affected by these shock waves. And here's what happens to the stone. The stone is broken. It falls into ultimately small pieces. And here's the stone. We now have broken it up into small pieces. And the stone will pass. We'll do an x-ray a week or so later. And uh, no stone. Now this is the area that did have the stone. This is our fluoroscopic image. But more to the point, this is our x-ray image, which has higher resolution than the fluoroscopy, and there is no stone. We actually have the patient that was on the lift trip. Thank you for letting me be part of this symposium. I appreciate it. And after an lift trip on July 3rd, uh, this year, I never felt better in my life. Anyway, I have thought about being a doctor, and I just got the mic here. Well, thank you for sharing your experience. Thank you for being here. The real issue is, how do we keep this from happening again? People always say to me about kidney stones, okay, Doc, you got rid of the stones, but tell me about what I can do to keep them from happening again. So let me at least try. First off, our kidneys put out a great deal of material that if they didn't, we would be very sick very quickly. In stone formers, calcium, which is the predominant component of stone, to crystallize and that is where stones come from. Oxalate is present in almost all the foods we eat and is obviously secreted in very significant concentrations in the urine. So what we tell our folks simply after a single stone is drink more fluids. We do a number of things. We look at the diet, the medical history, and we do a lab work. When we retrieve the stone, and you saw we could fracture it and collect those fragments, we can send that to the lab, and they tell us what this stone is made of, which helps us understand what to do for that particular stone former. We know what the normal findings are. Now, one of the things that's fairly commonly known is that sodium drives calcium. So if you, if you take a lot of salt, bag of potato chips, popcorn, salt, and so on and so forth, you're bringing a lot of calcium into the urine. If you have a determination on your urine that your calcium's high, one of the things you want to do is get rid of the sodium. A good thing to do would be stop taking the potato chips and popcorn, but you can also get rid of it with thiazide diuretic. Citrate is a material that's in our urine, and it is an uh, agent that keeps stones from forming in many people. People who don't have enough citrate tend to have stones, and we can replace it with a, a commercially taken product, medical expulsive therapy. What does that mean? Well, if you have a small stone in the ureter, and you have a medication that will relax the ureter, Clomax, that medication and taking lots of fluid and maybe even a diuretic, a thiazide, will create a flushing effect. And if you relax the ureter, 
You may not have to do anything, and you wash a small stone out. You don't have to have a lot of intervention. All stone formers should be looked at thoughtfully. We can manage most with fluids and diet. When you call your doctor and you have back pain and you think you're having a recurrent stone, let him tell you that you need probably to see a urologist. Ask him one question. Does that urologist work in an ambulatory environment? Because if he does, remember, you'll be home in your bed while the other people who went to the ER are sitting still in the waiting room.